It's hard for me to believe we are still arguing about President Trump and Twitter. This has gone on for about two years now. During the campaign, a lot of the so-called experts in the press said, wow, he's really hurting himself with all these tweets. Turns out it helped get him elected. That's not my opinion. Somebody challenged me on this. Well, how do I know what the president's thinking? He said this to me and others in interviews, and then he tweeted, sorry, folks, this is a real slap at the press, but if I never would have, but if I would have relied on the fake news of CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, Wash Post, or NY Times, I would have had zero chance of winning White House. And then there was this. This is a hot topic these days. The fake MSM is working so hard trying to get me not to use social media. They hate that I can get the honest and unfiltered message out. And yeah, he's got 31 million followers. Whatever he tweets becomes big news. But the the debate has taken a turn in recent days because even some of his own allies, Republicans on the Hill, some of his own advisors are suggesting that perhaps the president is undermining himself uh, a bit on Twitter. Not that he shouldn't use it, but that perhaps he uses it too much or that he uses it in a way that is both a distraction or actually can undercut his agenda. This came up immediately after the London terror attack, the latest one at the London Bridge, uh, where the president... Um, um, talked about uh, the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, and kind of picked a fight with him, uh, taking a quote that was attributed to Khan uh, about how people in the city of London should not be alarmed, uh, as if he was telling people not to worry about the terrorist attack. What Khan was saying was, we will increase our police presence in the coming days, uh, and uh, therefore you should feel safe. Uh, so that, of course, prompted a back and forth between Khan and President Trump. And there was also, you know, rather than the usual sort of bland, unifying statements uh, that presidents often issue after a terrorist attack in another country, there was a pitch for his travel ban, in other words, turning it to domestic politics. So he got a lot of media criticism for that. Uh, and look, look you know, it, I don't think it particularly helped him uh, to be having this transatlantic feud uh, with the mayor of London at the time. And, and then that kind of morphed into more tweets uh, from President Trump about the travel ban, which right now is this is the second version because the first one uh, was blocked by the courts. It is headed to the Supreme Court for some kind of final review, presumably. And the president tweeted about how uh, this was the politically correct watered down version and the Justice Department should ask for a quicker hearing and do a tougher version. The thing that's kind of odd there is that the president ultimately oversees and controls the Department of Justice. Uh, and no action about a second travel ban or what the wording would be or whether how to appeal the first one would have been taken without his approval. So a lot of people said um, that this was not only questionable, uh, but could undercut his own case before the Supreme Court. And one of those, interestingly enough, making that case was George Conway, who's a uh, noted attorney who recently uh, backed out of an offer to be an assistant attorney general in charge of the civil division, but who is known mainly for being the husband of Kellyanne Conway. Now, uh, George Conway supports President Trump, but he said uh, this would hurt the efforts. The only thing that matters, he said, was the ability of the solicitor general to win five votes when the travel ban comes before the Supreme Court. Sad, he said. I wonder where he came up with that kind of line. Um, and, and, and so, you know, Trump sort of doubles down and triples down in this situation. And uh, I happen to think, as much as it ticks off the press, which is often the target of many of these tweets, uh, that it is a very effective mechanism for him. But when he's going after the mayor of London, uh, going after his own Justice Department, and there's a report from the Washington Post that he made live tweet rebuttals on Thursday. Uh, to James Comey when he goes up for his uh, Hill testimony, which is going to be a major media event with all the broadcast networks carrying it as well as the cable networks, um, you know, then it becomes more questionable whether or not uh, the president is helping himself. He obviously, nobody's going to take his phone away. He's going to do this as much as he wants. But when you have even voices sympathetic to the president saying maybe he needs to be more selective, maybe he needs to cool it, that might be something to consider. But of course, when you're president of the United States, you can do whatever you want.